At the Cliff House, Steffi purrs that surfing makes her husband very salty. Finn notes they have the house to themselves and could wash away some of the tension. Steffi doesn't think water will stop her worrying about her mother. At Taylor's office, she tells Brooke that her family puts her as a paragon of virtue, but she shot someone. Sheila's not wrong. They're not that different. At Forrester Creations, Katie asks Sheila what she's doing there. Sheila says she came to warn her that she needs to accept her relationship with Bill. Katie asks if she'll shoot her if she refuses. Sheila says of course not, but they need to learn to coexist, for Will's sake. Katie narrows her eyes and fumes. I don't ever want to hear his name come out of your mouth. If Sheila thinks she's letting her anywhere, well she's even crazier than she thought. At the Cliff House, Steffi apologizes to Finn for letting thoughts of her mother distract her, especially when she has this sexy doctor in her arms. They kiss. Finn admits it's been on his mind too. He vows to do everything in his power to protect them from Sheila. They embrace. At Forrester, Sheila informs Katie that she's trying to be patient with her because she wants this to work. Katie retorts that it's not going to work. Sheila insists she's going to be part of Bill's life for a very long time, which means she's also going to be a part of her. Katie shakes her head. No, you're not. She points out that she thinks Bill is committed to her, but she doesn't see a ring on her finger. Sheila begins baiting Katie about Carter. How is that going, Katie? Katie wonders if she really wants to know or if she's just insecure about her hold on Bill. In Taylor's office, Brooke recaps that the night Taylor shot Bill she thought he violated her daughter. She's nothing like Sheila. Taylor tears up and Brooke pulls her into a hug. At Forrester, Katie asks Sheila if she thinks coming to Forrester makes her look secure. She clearly feels threatened by her, and she should. I could have him back in seconds. Sheila laughs and informs her that she showed her true colors. She sniffs about her arrogance and tells Katie that they both know the Logan sister he wants is Brooke. Would she risk her self-respect just to spite her? Sheila needles about Katie always being second best and about her weak heart. She levels, you're not strong enough for a man like Bill. Sheila declares that there is nothing Katie can say or do to come between them. Katie fumes, we'll see about that. At the Cliff House, Finn and Steffi go over Sheila somehow getting into Bill's head. Finn recalls how she tried to do the same thing to him, playing on his sympathies. Steffi wonders how she'll protect her mother from herself. She feels so much guilt and shame. At Taylor's office, Brooke won't let her friend blame herself anymore. This is not healthy, and I am not going to let you compare yourself to Sheila. She tells Taylor she's an incredible light and a force in this world. She made a bad error in judgment, but it's not on her. This is on Bill and Sheila. Taylor asks, how did you know exactly what I needed to hear? Brooke is a friend, and that's what friends are for. They sit and wish they never had to hear the names Bill and Sheila again. Taylor says Ridge feels the same way. She tells Brooke that he called, and they go over how he's taking a good look at himself. Brooke says that when they talk, Ridge is concerned about Taylor not just the kids. Brooke assures Taylor she doesn't have to be alone. I will be here for you no matter what. At the Cliff House, Finn has a few suggestions on how to get Steffi's mind off their troubles. He alludes to an examination and a prescription, and they start making out on the couch. At Forrester, Katie informs Sheila that when Will comes home from school, he'll be living with her. He won't see Bill or visit his father as long as Sheila's living in that house. Sheila complains about her using her child to keep a man. Katie's just telling her how it's going to be. She warns that Bill's relationships with his sons are vastly more important than what he's doing with Sheila. Katie adds, he's not like you. He has good inside him. And good wins every single time over evil. And you are pure evil. Just then, Carter walks in and gops, Sheila? What is this? Katie assures him she's fine. Carter fumes, leave. Now. Sheila walks out. Carter asks if Katie is okay. She shakily replies, How can any of us be okay as long as Sheila's in our lives? He holds her. Katie assures Carter she won't let Sheila get to her. 
Carter barks that she should have called security. He knows that she can protect herself and doesn't need anyone defending her. Katie tells him it feels really good that he wants to. Carter feels they're building something real that could last. He doesn't feel unlucky anymore. In fact, I'm feeling very lucky, in love. Katie's feeling pretty lucky in love too. They kiss. At the cliff house, Finn and Steffi lay together in a postcoital glow. He assures her he locked the door so they won't get any unwanted visitors walking in for once. Finn recalls falling in love with Steffi, who tells him how much joy their family gives her. It just makes me very grateful to have you here. It's truly a miracle. They flash to being reunited in Monte Carlo. It's a memory Steffi will hold onto for the rest of their lives. They kiss deeply. In Taylor's office, she tells Brooke that she just gave her a really good therapy session. She's been questioning her role as a doctor. And everything, really. She's been talking to a therapist, but she can't tell her everything. Brooke says that's why she's there. You need a friend to talk to. I'm your friend. She repeats that she's there for her, no matter what, and that they'll get through this. She knows it because I survived you and you survived me. They laugh. Brooke muses that it's so bizarre what's happening with Bill. Yet she knows him and is certain that there will be no harm to Taylor or her family. They rejoice in being friends, embrace, hold hands, and smile at each other.